Welcome to a new video, a video which should be quite fun because I am in, I am in, <laughs> I'm in for what? <laughs> Welcome to another video, oh god. <laughs> Welcome to another video, this is the fourth time we've tried this intro, which is worrying for a video that's supposed to be one take. But look, look at who I'm with, what I'm with, I should say. I'm with out. a Paul Wallace. This is the first time. Well, I'm with you for the first time. Oh, the sun's out. <laughs> the, the sun's out time. on this <laughs> trip. <laughs> From Supercars of London. Um, we're, we're, this video should be kind of fun because this is the first time ever mm. that we have bought the same car at the same time. Yeah, I don't know whether that's me with poor taste. I think it's probably me. I'm, I've all... What are you trying to say? Yeah, this is why this is the fourth take, isn't it? Well, keep it going, keep it going. <laughs> you, I would taste, say, I would say I agree with that. the cars that I've owned no one else would want to own, whereas for the first time. Uh, yeah, well, true. And also, we're growing up. We're becoming more responsible. Anyways, supposedly. supposedly. The car in question is the BMW M135i X-Drive. We've both got in one of these, slightly different uh, versions of the car, like specs and everything. Um, and pretty interesting. Daily driver for mm -hmm. both of us. You uh, bought it with your wife. It's actually, yeah, my wife's car. It's, yeah, okay. Have you driven it much? Yeah, 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 I've driven it a lot. Have you driven mine more than yours? No. Okay. <laughs> uh, anyway, I thought it'd be fun that we walk you around the car. Uh, we're actually near Pagani right now, in Italy. So we came here to do some filming. That's not, that actually worked. That shockingly worked, yeah. <laughs> Just skimmed a stone on mud. <laughs> and uh, we're going to look at the interior, exterior, go for a drive, and tell you about why we bought the cars. And I also think it's interesting to talk about how we bought uh, these different cars Is because it? I think so finance okay. versus leasing or buying and anyways all that kind of stuff you're gonna hop on my head POV as usual let's get into it so here it is this is my brand new m 135 so I've actually had this car for about a month and a half now mm -hmm. I've done two and a half thousand miles okay. over three thousand kilometers yeah and I've been loving every second of it so basically I had the m3 touring Great car. Mm -hmm. um, it's, actually, it's up for sale now, so technically I do actually still have the M3 Touring. Someone buy it. Yeah. <laughs> so I have the M3 Touring, but amazing car. Loved every second of it. Uh, few issues. First of all, I also share the car with my girlfriend, so she would drive it from time to time, and she was pretty intimidated by the M3 Touring. Okay. Power, size, everything. Also, I bought the car brand new. There's quite a few available on the market now, and it started depreciating quite a bit. Yeah. And I do a lot of miles in my cars. I mean, yeah. two and a half thousand in the last month, basically. Yeah. So when you're putting a lot of miles on the car, I'm not someone who wants to have a car and be worried about the amount of miles I'm putting on it. Yeah. So I thought that maybe what I could do is finally get one of my dream cars, which will be a video that's coming up soon, and on the side, be able to, you know, split the finances to be able to then have a daily that I'm then not worried about the amount of miles I'm doing on it and also the depreciation which is one of the reasons why I've leased this car which we'll get into later yeah that's the intro of why I now have this car I think it's something that we massively overlooked when we were younger yeah of having a practical comfortable mm. small fuel efficient daily driver because every daily that I had when I was getting overly excited about buying cars, I had the M3, the C63, a Nissan GTI M2 competition, mm. was every single time I bought it, I was super excited until I'd got about 5,000 miles in and I'm like, oh, I'm not too sure how many more miles I can do in this car before yeah. I start seeing the price fall off a cliff. Exactly. And for me, it was the Golf GTI that made me realize how stress-free driving can be. Yeah by having a car that feels like a go-kart, is super fast for many of the roads that we drive on, not just in the UK or south of France or Geneva, and actually a discreet car as well. Yeah, discreet car, so you're not everywhere. worried about where you're parking it. Can, practical, so you actually have five proper seats. Yep. So you can take your friends with you, big boot. I've for some reason got it into cycling now. So for example, I can fit the bike in the back. Yeah, One of the reasons I couldn't get a two series. Um, you have, we'll get into why we've both chosen this exact car, but for me, one of the big reasons was there, were there was a certain level of kind of gadgets and luxuries 
that I wanted to have in the car that make your, your daily driving easy. So um, one of the reasons why I wanted a really new car was I wanted CarPlay, yeah. um, adaptive cruise control for the long drives. Something in warranty. Warranty, thing, exactly. All of those things. Stress-free. As you said, get rid of all the stresses yeah. of having the car. Um, so I was hesitating thanks to you, between this and a Golf GTI. You told me how much you love the Golf GTI. Oh, I miss it. Well, you've now gone and bought one of these. So yeah. how, what made you get one of these over the Golf? So the car primarily is for my wife and she does town driving mm -hmm. every, everywhere. And so I was actually looking at a, a very small diesel or petrol engine, potentially hybrid, one series, A class, mm. Golf, that kind of car. And essentially, I'd done the man math with the finance and realized that the sports versions, the M135i, A35 AMG, the Golf GTD and the GTI, actually retain their value better. Yeah. So whilst per month, they cost more, when you come out of the finance agreement, you're likely to recuperate a much more of the money that you've invested into the car, meaning, it actually works out cheaper when you then split it over the months that you've owned the car for. That's because of the residuals. Exactly. The residuals are better, yeah. And the M135i came out so much cheaper than the Golf, Golf GTI, the A35, and we did look at the i30N as well, yep. the high-end i. Yep. And the, all of these cars obviously are premium brands, manufacturers, so you get a really nice build quality, the reliability, the services, the every, everything that comes with the experience. When yeah. you get in a BMW, it just feels well put together. Yeah, it just feels nice everywhere. Everything that you're touching, the buttons. Yeah, you've got the sound system. Yeah, we I know exactly what you mean. It, it feels like a premium car, and again, there's just not much to worry about. And actually, with the lease deals, it was the same thing for me. I was hesitating with the Golf. Yeah, but I had a higher interest rate on the. Um, on the Volkswagen deal than I did on the through BMW Finance. Yep. And so actually this was costing me less a month than the Golf would. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, it, I actually hadn't thought about this car, I have to admit at yeah, first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I thought of the, the Hyundai, I thought of the Golf. Um, I thought of the AMG. For some reason, I'm not a huge fan of, of the A-Class. Yeah. The 135i hadn't really caught my eye. And then when you start, so when you're in the market, it's a car that you don't really know you want. And then when you're in the market, all of a sudden it ticks so many boxes. So price-wise, there's interesting deals to be had on these. Yeah. Then all of a sudden you're like, oh, it actually feels quite grown up. Maybe more, than, definitely I'd say, than the Hyundai. Yeah. Maybe more even than the Golf. Just feels like a slightly more grown up, it's mature car. Definitely less chavvy than the A30. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Especially with track kit with the yeah the track and kit and all that stuff <coughs> and then because it's a bmw you can spec on all those luxuries that i was talking about so let's get on to spec because we have different specs first of all yours is gray silver yeah it's called dove gray i think so okay. it's kind of like a bluey gray in the sun looks gray otherwise it's kind of like quite a gloss flat color yeah. but it's also got the so a titanium, aluminium, satin, I don't know, ion, ionized, I don't know, yeah. grill, One of the wing easiest mirrors. ways to tell it's a 135. Exactly. Wheels, grill, details down here. Yeah. Um, which I think in most colours it does suit, but then obviously if you're going to go black... black yeah, you want to go for... You want to go the black pack. So I, I want, yeah, I wanted to go black, so then the whole black pack and you get these black lights. Also. Yeah, the, sm the smoked front headlights look really, really smart. Yeah, the, the, it looks like you've kind of tinted them, doesn't it? But you know, I think that looks really good. It also went, obviously, for the full adaptive cruise control option and all that stuff, which you can see through here. You get a little wing front splitter thing. Over yeah. The other. It's one of those cars where it's very hard to tell the, the <laughs> big engine version compared to the others. So you, you have over 300 horsepower. Another thing that probably like you, I, I wanted was a, a certain amount of power so that on the motorways and things like that, um, you can overtake easily. And then if ever you are on a fun road, you can still have a good time. Yeah, at the end of the day, you still got that urge to have a thrilling drive if you yeah. want. And we'll get into it when we're actually driving because 
I slagged this car off when it first came out. Yeah. I completely ruined it in a video. I don't think BMW were particularly happy because it took me ages to get another BMW from yeah. them. Um, but to, to drive this car, what BMW have done is, like you say, they've grown it up yeah. from the previous one series and they've also expanded the safety net with the X drive. But what that does is not only make it fun, feel like a go-kart on these yeah. roads, on the roads, but when you're in Geneva and driving over the mountains or if you're in the UK and you're just constantly getting rained on, having the X drive is, is oh, so awesome. nice, so yeah. nice. For example, I have winter tires on this because legally in Switzerland you need to have winter tires. Yeah. But also I've been skiing. I've been up to the mountains with it twice. Yeah. And having the X drive is amazing for that. Four wheel drive car, winter tires, nothing to worry about. Yeah. So these actually are the rims, the wheels that the car was delivered on. So I do have a set of 19 inches. Um, these are the 18 inch winter spec tires. So I'll, whenever it gets a bit warm, I'll, I'll put the other ones back on. I opted for the blue brake calipers. I was hesitating for red brake calipers. Yeah. Um, because, oh yeah, I, I didn't mean, well, so I got the car new, so I was able to spec it, which, yeah. was, which was nice. Um, I think blue goes well. It goes well with the interior, we'll yeah. see after. It's like the M color, right? So I thought, you know, might as well. Yeah. And on the M3, I had the red calipers, so I thought, you know what, switch it up. Um, there you go. It's obviously fairly compact, so to drive around town, you have all those advantages. We'll get into the cabin in a little bit, but you've got proper rear seats. I was actually shocked by the amount of space you have in the back of this. Um, maybe because I'm tiny, <laughs> but you've also got the sports seats, which aren't an option on the 135i, but are on the smaller engines, I think. Uh, we've got here, spec-wise, we've got the M seat belts, and then I've gone for the Alcantara interior with the blue stitching and blue finishes. Is this, is this your interior? This is exactly the same as the one that we've okay. got. Okay, so there you go. Yeah. Um, sunroof as well, which is lovely uh, when the weather gets a bit better. We haven't used it once yet. Nope. <laughs> and then currently, oh yeah, the car's a little dirty now because we're on this road trip. We've probably done 700 miles in it. In the I'd last, say so, yeah. Without it having a wash. Full boot. I think it's probably worth mentioning the electric tailgate. Yeah. Because that I, is I an option. I think that's an option, right? It is, yeah. yeah. So that was an option. Uh, the parking sensors. It has a reversing camera. Yeah. But not a front camera. Yeah. It doesn't have the full 360. You can't option that. Um, boot, is, boot is actually a really good size. Weirdly, in Switzerland, you don't get like the... Uh, what, what would you call that? Like the floor? floor? <laughs> yeah, the, the boot floor. So it just goes straight through. So I've asked them if I can... Have a floor. Have a floor. <laughs> they say it's the same weight. What? I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. Genuinely. Do you have a spare they... tire? Do you have a spare tire in this? No, no spare not? tire. No, 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 no spare tire. That's a bit weird. Yeah, anyway, well, so no floor, nothing. Uh, you can put the seats down flat, which is great. So again, for the bike. Yeah, we bought some olive oil. There you go. There's some <laughs> content for you. When in Italy. You can put the seats down super easily. I'll just demonstrate that really quickly, but you literally just pull here, bosh, off you go, seats all the way down. And then to get the bike in, to get skis in, anything like that, it's great. Uh, yeah, really good, really convenient. Yep. So um, hatchback also, so it makes it easier to get things in and out of. It's a shame they don't have the opening window like the M3. Yeah. Because that's so convenient. When you park close to a wall, yeah. and you can just open that and get what you need out, that's great. Another thing is, so the black pack gives you the black exhaust also. Yep. Um, black diffuser. That. But you still have this, this badge here is the same material and finish to what all of my details are. Okay, yes. So you get an I idea. I think I could get it complete, I could have had it completely debadged. Um, yeah, but then you could have been mistaken for a 118, whatever they it's are. It's so hard to tell them apart. Is this, I think the wing is slightly bigger, on, or the wing, whatever maybe, you call this. Maybe, maybe. Um, so yeah, so that's the exterior of this one. Let's hop on the interior. So yeah, you already saw the spec. I went for the light, uh, I believe it's a slightly lighter option for the trim. You know, there's two options for is the there? trim. Is there? Yeah. has got this as well that lights up. It's got like yeah, so ambient lighting. lighting. Exactly. Which is very cool. So it's the old iDrive system. Which, which we both prefer. Genuinely. So from having had the M3, which has the new screen, there are advantages to the new screen. 
first of all, it's, it's big, so then for the car play and all that kind of stuff. Um, but this is actually slightly more intuitive, I feel. Would you like a, a little secret? Sure. So I had an M3 Touring for a week from BMW. Mm -hmm. Amazing spec. It was incredible, and we did this awesome road trip to the Cotswolds, and I had all of this wicked footage of driving on beautiful roads, we parked up in some pubs, and it was just one of those videos that I think could have yeah. been really cool. We went on this journey, it was a bus. Awesome. I then got a little bit caught up, because I was really frustrated with this huge big screen. Yeah. Of course it looks nice, but actually to use, it just had about 45 apps on the home screen. Yeah. And because I only had it for a week and it wasn't mine, I didn't feel like I needed to customize it and set it up myself. Mm -hmm. I got so frustrated with it that I realized that half my video was just a rant about the new infotainment system on the BMW. <laughs> I was like, I don't think BMW would be too happy with this. Even though the car's great and when you dial everything up, it is unbelievable as a performance car. I ended up canning the video, I just deleted it. I was like, I'm not gonna bother uploading it because was really? Because I, I was about to say, I didn't see you put a video out on there. I was a little bit rude about it. <laughs> well, you've driven my M3, right? Yeah, I have, yeah. Yeah, you have. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It was, uh, the, the car's great. And for M, I know what you mean, the screen is annoying. For yeah. M cars, it's about how good the car is as a yeah. driver's car, and they are so phenomenally good as driver's cars, and they always have been, but it almost was like they'd put this screen in as if it was a 7 Series. Yeah. And I think those cars, where it's all about comfort and luxury, deserve to have a sweeping screen and all of the icons and stuff, but just strip everything back for the M cars. We don't need well, yeah. a massive iPad with all of the apps. Like, my iPhone is streamlined. I've only yeah. got one page yeah. where I've got all of my apps on because I don't like having... Uh, it also, really Also, just to me. put your heated seat on, it was through the screen, like yeah. here at least, yeah. like... What, these we've been using loads throughout this trip. You want your heated seats on it here. You want to change the temperature, it's there. Your fan speed, bosh, easy volume if right you, there. If you want to press number eight. I mean, this literally no one... I'm, I, I don't, honestly don't know why that's still in BMW. Yeah, I know what you mean. But yeah, this... Well, it's quite an old car now, this. It's like a four-year-old car. Three-year-old yeah, model. I think it came out, yeah. it came out late 2018. Yeah, I'm just going to start it up so we start to get aircon on. So there you go, you got all, this is exactly the same as in the M3. So you have your different modes, your different driving modes. So Sport, Comfort, Eco Pro. Both of us basically only drive in Eco Pro yeah. most of the time. Apart from when you get on a fun road, then you're whacking into Sport. But honestly, Eco Pro is basically what I'm in most of the time because I'm driving this as a pure daily, trying to get the best fuel consumption. So we, we did the calculation to over, 3,000 or whatever kilometers. I'm at 7.7 7 7 liters per 100, which was about... 30 mpg, is 30 mpg, yeah. Yeah, ours is a little bit high, but we then realized that your speed limits in Europe are higher. Exactly. So when you're sat on the motorway doing the long distances... What's that? I don't know what that was. Someone just got in the boot. <laughs> um, you're naturally going faster, therefore higher revs. Yeah, therefore. and also Switzerland mountains. Yeah. Uh, I've been up to the mountains a couple of times. One thing I, I do want to just mention before we start driving, these seats are incredible. Yeah. I love these seats. I love, first of all, the fact that they're in this, you know, it, I'm not even sure if it's real Alcantara, what texture it is, but basically makeshift Alcantara. Yeah. Um, it feels great, it's comfortable. So uh, it doesn't burn you when you get in whenever it's hot in the same way. And the seats are just a good shape. They, they look cool, they feel sporty, they hold you in as much as you need, but they're very comfortable for long drives. I had the choice of, because I've bought used, I had the choice of a black car that had a bigger spec mm. with the leather seats, which is an optional extra. Yeah. It's actually more expensive to yeah, spend yeah. the leather. And the gray car that had less spec, but had these seats. Yeah. And I went for the gray car, mainly because of the because seats. Because of the seats, yeah. yeah. Well, one thing, I am not such a huge fan of this blue stuff, I have to admit. I mean. I, you don't notice it once you're once you're in the car or anything, but yeah, if it was full Alcantara, it'd maybe be slightly better. No, I quite like the details. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, so you have your induction charger here for your phone, but then you know I plug it through the cable right here. Um, you have your CarPlay. You then have your full digital dash, which does change. Like if we go into Sport, it just goes red basically. Um, you can't change that much actually on the dash, it's just your button right here which allows you to just filter through a little bit of different information. Oh, only 2,700 kilometers actually, I lied, I said I'd done more. 
I thought it was more your G's, your all that kind of stuff. So some of the luxuries that I was talking about um, that make living with this easier are obviously things like heated seats, electric seats, um, heated steering wheel, even on this one, all of the cruise control, but Harman and Kardon sound system. So that's like the advantage of- Harman and Kardon. <laughs> I think it's just Harman Kardon. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, you're probably right there. But we're having a BMW um, you, you get these options because they're things that they'll put on the put on the other cars and will trickle down to this model. Everything does feel nice. I mean, there's some plasticky feeling stuff yeah. all around here. Yeah. Yeah. All of this is a bit of a shame, but I mean, you're on a one series, so to this be expected. This door handle is very similar to the Storato that we were in yesterday. It is very similar to mm. the Storato. You're right. Or any Hurricane, actually, for that matter. Or any Hurricane. But yeah, I mean, that's kind of the price you pay to have the one series, obviously no Alcantara he headlining or anything like that, but it's not the kind of car you're, you're looking to get that in. Head up display. Do you have head up display? Yeah. yeah. That's lovely. So basically just makes your everyday driving really nice and easy and relaxing. And that was the idea for me. And I believe it was the same for you and your wife was to have a car that is still a BMW, still has those driving attributes, still is good fun. So if you are on that fun little road, you'll have a good time, but that you're able to just stack the miles on and have all the convenience of a small car. <laughs> We've been in some pretty ridiculous cars so far. Yeah. GT3 RS, on this Hurricane trip, Storato, yeah. and both times we've got back in this car and we've gone, this is a great road trip car. Yeah, <laughs> every time we get back in, we're just like, oh, it's relaxing, it's nice. It's very quiet in this car, I was surprised. And whilst it is a small car, it still feels um, like it's got a certain amount of weight to it. I don't mean that in a bad sturdy. way. It feels sturdy, yeah. So it's not like when you're on the motorway, every time you, you go by a truck, you feel like you're, the car's gonna kind of pull you completely into the wall or anything like that. It's it's just a nice place to be, to be honest. I've got the perfect YouTube title for this video. We're getting old. Wannabe old man reviews BMW M135i. I'm genuinely, I'm, <laughs> that's what my girlfriend was telling me. She was like, God, when I listen to you talk about why you love this car so much, it worries me, you're, you're, you are getting old. Because before, you know, I was daily driving a Scuderia. I mean, I've done what's happened? I've done Monaco to London in one day in a Gallardo. Yes, yeah, so like, what has happened <laughs> With to With a us? full DCAT header exhaust system. And I remember doing that journey and saying, I will never do that in a day again. That was absolute oh, yeah, hell. That must have been an absolute and nightmare. then I, like two, three years later, I went down in a C63. Got to Monaco, did the drive down in the day, Monaco to, uh, sorry, London to Monaco in the day, got to Monaco and I was like, right, where are we driving now? That was the easiest drive I have ever done. So it gets put, put into context how having a comfortable car to do the road trip in oh, makes the biggest difference. I've always said though, when you're driving in those Alps roads, yes, you've got the twisties where you want a Cayman GT4 or something like that. I've always vowed that a Rolls Royce Dawn is just as enjoyable to cruise around on air suspension, the magic carpet ride feel, and you've got the roof down, and you're just looking at the mountains. Look, listen to us. No, no, no. Listen I was to saying us. that when I had my Gallardo. Ah. So at 24 years old, I was still desiring that comfy <laughs> life. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, look now, we've both gone and bought the One Series. This is a um, better car for daily driving than my Stelvio Quadrifoglio. Okay, yeah, 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 I, I'd see that, honestly. Well, also because it has the size advantage. What are you it, talking about? The Stelvio Quadrifoglio is much bigger. No, but I mean size advantage in that way that when you're driving oh, you around town, you uh, can park easy. Yeah. I'd much rather have a small car to daily drive, to be yeah. honest, than a big car. Yeah. Um, it will, it's much better on fuel, probably, than your Stelvio. <laughs> yep. Every, um, car, every car is. Uh, every car is. It's <laughs> probably got just as much space, I imagine. Yeah. I mean, there's so. Oh, look, we're getting overtaken. <laughs> <laughs> but see, this is what it is. We're in our eco pro mode, and this is probably how um, a lot of the people who have one of these will drive. Seventy percent of the time, I yeah, imagine. Yeah, I think when you're 
using it for A to B, unless you are just an absolute hooligan and you're up on three wheels around every corner in any car you get in. Yeah. Um, I do find myself driving it in Eco Pro. I feel like comfort is pretty pointless. Yeah. Because Eco Pro gives you everything that you need plus a little bit of efficiency when you're on the long, longer drives. And yeah. then when normally when we're, we're on a road like this and we're driving between Pagani and Ferrari, we'll be in sport mode because yeah. we'll be on a road like this. Yeah, exactly. You're either in sport or, or Eco yeah, Pro. So you're not going to spend much time ignored. in comfort. And elephant in the room with the 135Is is that a lot of the character of this car or this model has been taken out from the yeah. previous generation, right? That's why I went in on it when I first drove it. BMW lended me one and I just finished driving and having my first experience of driving an M140i. Yeah, which is so much character. An absolute hooligans car. And still to this day, I look at them on Auto Trader to be like, that is a mega car. Rear wheel drive, all the power, a massive engine in such a small car. And I think BMW probably looked at that and gone, we don't want to try and improve that. Let's leave that to be this cult hero for the one series. Yeah. But a lot of people are probably crashing them. So let's X drive it. Let's make it a bit more grown up. Oh, Pagani. Pagani. What's that parked outside? It's like a blue. 599 of some sort? Yeah, this I is think a Pagani it's a 599, 599 GTR. Uh, it's got the XX winglets. We, we can go around. We'll go around okay. and see. But yeah, I know exactly what you mean. And then with this one, it was like, let's make a more grown up. Um, and yeah, I have to admit, you do miss the character sometimes. But I don't know if it's just because of where we are right now in our lives. And we, we wanted that grown upness. I'm actually quite enjoying that, to be yeah, honest, also. It is um, a grown up. Uh, I misjud not misjudged it, I misunderstood it. Yeah, it's the kind of car that if you just hop in and do like what you did last time and test drive one, you're not going to be that impressed. Mm. But if you're actually living with it, if you're the person who's bought it and is living with it, it grows on you. Then it grows on what you. What do we have here, Seb? That is another one. I think, that's, right here? I think that's just a one series though. But see what I mean? It's so hard. Yeah, that was. You could tell by the calipers. The calipers yeah. is a good way to tell, but it is very hard to tell. Now I've leased this car, Paul. Yes, you have. First time I've ever leased yeah. a car. When you told me that, I thought you were an absolute lunatic, but it does make sense. To a certain extent. For your circumstances. For my circumstances, which is, I'm, always, I'm getting this other car, which I'll release soon to you guys, which has always been a goal of mine. So I'm, I'm getting that car. It's an Aventador SVJ Roadster. <laughs> I wish, <laughs> I wish. Um, so I'll have that for those moments where you want to you know, have that car to take out, special occasions, all that kind of stuff. So I'm in a very fortunate position that uh, I'm able to, to do that, right? And then I just- that, that was, sorry, that was a man on a bike. St stop here, because there's no one coming. He had a Pagani carbon fiber wing under his arm. You're joking. No, no, no. <laughs> the kind of stuff you only see here, wait. Shall we wait here and let him come past? Yeah, I'm gonna try and film it. We're right next to Pagani. Let's let these guys by. That is hilarious. You know, oh yeah, he has a carbon fiber wing, literally. That is hilarious. Look, now we'll see. He's going in, isn't he? He's going into Pagani. Yup. Hey! <laughs> I've got the wing! <laughs> Look at him, what a legend! What a legend! <laughs> Unbelievable. Any Paganis? No, but we'll get a good look at this 599. Oh yeah, it's a 599 GTO. Oh, that is cool. That is unbelievable. Monaco plates as well. Oh, of course. Unreal. Very cool. We should probably pop in there, Seb. We should probably pop in there, I but mean, it's part of the reason why we're here. It is part of the reason why we're here. But let's uh, finish this video, go for lunch, and then pop in there. Good idea, Seb. Anyway, I was saying so leasing it, so there's that other car, fantastic. Then wanted just this daily, and I was looking into, you know, all the different ways of, of, yeah, I guess being able to buy this car. Do you just buy it outright? Do you finance it? Do you lease it? And in the end, I know I'm not gonna want to keep this for more than two years. 
So I decided to go for a two year lease where that's it, nothing to worry about. You know, I've learned my lesson on other cars where unfortunately I've lost money M3 from touring. depreciation, mainly the M3 Touring. Um, and so I'm just kind of done with that. So yeah. I wanted to just be able to, oh, yeah, this is my priority. No, yeah, 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 okay, fine. we're good to go. I wanted to just be able to almost like count your losses before before you're there. Yeah. And I had this amazing 0.9% interest rate deal nice. on uh, from BMW with nice. the lease deal. And so this car is costing me, with insurance included, about 500 pounds a month. Yeah. Um, and that's, yeah, everything this car is ever gonna cost me. There's no servicing. The, it's all, everything's under warranty, nothing to worry about. And I have this awesome, awesome daily driver, um, fully insured, no, what do you call it? Um, excess, yeah. all this kind of stuff. So it's literally, how can I get rid of any worries to do with my daily driver so that I can then concentrate on creating more worries because you know what car I've then got in <laughs> <laughs> with the other car which will be which will be enough stress for me your main concern is going to be fuel economy fuel economy <laughs> reliability I'm gonna have enough stuff to worry about so if you too are looking just for a car to be able to where are we going is this a road no this is a bike lane. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're going to have to reverse. I think we're going to have to reverse. We can show our... Um, the reverse camera is not great, is it? It's like a tiny... Oh, yeah. oh, okay. Yeah. I'm reversing. Reversing here. Turning, so, turning radius is okay. It's not great compared to a lot of these small city cars that you'll have. Um, fuel also is okay. It's not great compared to the Golf, for example, you were saying. Yeah, the Golf is unbelievable. The Golf is way better, For the GTI, right? it's unbelievable. Yeah. Um, way better than this. Yeah, so the Golf was getting, on average, around 45 mpg. On a good long distance run, I was getting in the sort of mid-50s. Yeah. In the UK, in the M135i, you're looking at late 30s, mid-30s. Yeah. Oh. Well, now you're looking at... Yeah, now you're looking at 20s. I just thought it'd be rude not to put in sport at any point. And there's a high speed limit on this little road, 90 km an hour speed limit. Yeah, unbelievable for Italy. Well, it was cause, probably because they know Pagani's nearby. Yeah. So yeah, you get a little bit of noise, don't you? You do. And those burbles... Where, here they are. No, they're kind of hard to predict. Yeah. Those bubbles are only inside though, yeah. aren't they? Oh, speed limit's gone back down. Yeah, so, so you don't hear any of that. It's all coming through the speakers. Outside the car, the car does sound a bit pathetic. Yeah. Um, Especially if you compare to the old generations. Oh, yeah. <laughs> My neighbor's got an M140i, and even just on startup, it sounds good. Yeah. So it does do this little... It does, yeah, but yeah, they're, re they're yeah, really... Yeah, they're very fake. Yeah. So it is fun. Dynamically, it's cool. I mean, front four-wheel drive, um, there's the advantages of that and the daily driver usage, but uh, it, it, it's obviously not a rear-wheel drive uh, BMW character that much. So don't expect uh, for this to be the most thrilling car you would ever kind of be able to drive in this category, but it just ticks loads of boxes and you're looking at Pagani. <laughs> yeah, I'm just looking down like the little service road to see yeah. if there's anything coming out for a test. It just ticks so many boxes. For me right now, just made perfect sense. It was exactly what I wanted, what I needed. Um, and I'm really excited to have this. I will be doing like a 5,000 mile, 10,000 mile um, reviews on it so we'll be, get more into the all the different aspects this was more just presenting the car and talking to you with Paul about why we both got in one of these I think that's basically that covered right for this POV video now yeah there will be plenty more content to come with this soon you're making a video on it too and uh, yeah hope you've enjoyed it give you that for the outro guys hope you enjoyed it and uh, we'll see you again very very soon Welcome to the 135i X-Drive. Bye-bye.